What's up, everyone? Today we've got a uh, another Russian knife loaned in by Alex from Alex's Knife Box, and there will be a link to his channel down below. So go check him out. This is the Cheberkov Scout, and I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's a little hard to decipher. <laughs> Now it's uh here here is the email and website and I'll put a link down in the description. Also, I think it's Cheberkov. I think the V is pronounced with an F, but forgive me if I'm wrong. So this is the this is one of his more popular models. This is a true custom. And it and Alex bought this to compare to his Shirogorov F95. And it's similar. We'll just put it like that. And I'll do another video probably tomorrow, um, kind of just comparing the two. Because I want to keep this one kind of short. The last couple of videos I've had have been rather long, and I just want to kind of have a couple of quick ones here for the next couple of days also. Okay, so let's just dive right into this one. It's five inches closed, eight and seven eighths overall. 3.87 inch blade and cutting edge. It is M390. It is 0 0.132 thick on the blade, 0 0.489 overall, minus the clip, of course, and weighs in at 5.3 ounces. So it is a little heavier than the Shirogorov, but basically the same exact dimensions otherwise, really. Um, and if we zoom in here, uh, the reason for the weight difference specifically is he does not do any milling out inside to lighten it. So, of course, it's going to be a little heavier. So this one is at 5.3 ounces and the Shirogorov is at 4.7. So not a big difference. You'll see some very similar lines in the blade. Handle shape is very similar. This is called the Scout model. And it's the milling pattern is kind of like a compass here, if you could picture that. Um, Timascus clip, Timascus backspacer. We'll talk about the backspacer here in a second. But really nice steel lock bar insert, over travel stop, you know, typical flame frame lock flipper you know, stuff, right? Runs on bearings. Not as drop shutty as the Shirogorov, but very nice in general. Now, let's talk about the backspacer for a second here. And it's something that Alex pointed out that I had already noticed. So they do have a lanyard hole, but there's, it's not a crack. That is how he designed the, the backspacer. So what Alex and I were talking about the other day on the phone, because he actually got a hold of them and asked and said, hey, I think my my backspacer cracked. And they're like, no, this is how we do it. I mean, they didn't explain all the details, but I'm kind of thinking that that's where they sawed, they sawed through to then make this really odd shaped, unclean, if you will, um, lanyard hole. It's like they didn't even go in and file it smooth after they just rough cut it. Let's see if the light will help with that. And and that's not just dirt or anything in there. That's just just a very rough cut all the way around. So for a custom is a little bit of a letdown there. Um on the backspacer. I mean, I think they did a great job on the um, doing a Timascus clip and all of that, but they kind of would have been better without a lanyard hole to begin with. That's just that, that's just me. But a very nice pocket clip works really well. Could have used a little more jimping on the flipper tab, if you ask my opinion, because it's there is some jimping there, but it's not very grippy. I don't know that you need a lot of grip, but a little would have been nice. 
Okay, now the other thing that Alex pointed out and I noticed also is the scales could have used some contouring. If you were really bearing down on this for a while and really doing some hard cutting, breaking down big cardboard boxes or, you know, breaking down cardboard for an extended period of time, this would become really uncomfortable in the hand. So they kind of missed the mark on a couple of things here, but all in all, you know, it's okay. And I think this was, well, I'm not even going to say the price. I think it was in that five to 600 range, but don't quote me on that because I forgot to write that down when I was talking to Alex. So let's do a couple of size comparisons here. And I'll pull out the Shirogorov here in just a second, just to do a quick size comparison. Um, but I will break down and I think I'll do kind of a video just specifically on those two. So that's a Sharpie, of course. Here is the F95. So you'll see a lot of similarities. The blade, the handle shapes, I mean, very similar overall plunge lines, you know, very, very similar. And, and this is not a copy of that. I mean, at the end of the day, the knives are knives are knives, right? There's only so many shapes and styles. And if you're in a specific style, it's going to have a similar shape. Spider Codelica. So it's, it's not that, you know, somebody ripped off somebody else or whatever. I mean, it, the, the reality is, well, <laughs> it's, it's a pointy knife, you know. Again, here's the Spectre and the Scout. Again, very similar blade shapes. A little bit shorter, but, but overall, very similar. Again, a knife is a knife, guys. Uh, how about the fifth 23? I meant to pick up the 20, but I picked up the 23. Just a hair longer. Much thicker. Fills your hand better, in my opinion. It's, it gives you a more fuller grip, but very similar in overall size. So there you go, guys. This is the, I, I have to read it to pronounce it right, Cheb, Cheberkoff Scout. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I apologize. So let me know what you think. I think it's a pretty cool knife overall. Just a couple little nitpicks. Uh, I think they just, you know, they kind of lost it on the backspacer. It's cool that it's a Timascus backspacer, but if you're going to do it, do it right. And if you can't mill that out properly, then just leave it without a lanyard hole because it's, you know, not necessary. So thanks for watching, everyone. Have yourselves a fantastic day and uh, stay tuned tomorrow for another video. Thanks, guys.